Pretty Logic for Life here, bringing you guys a brand new video this time around. We got some good old Chaos Impact stuff. Now, I'll be 100% honest, before we knew everything that's in it, well, in the TCG version at least, I haven't been too excited for Chaos Impact. There's not much in here that I'm really keen on. I mean, there's the Marinsis stuff, and I would love to build Marinsis, but the deck is expensive, and it really shouldn't be, because it's just kind of okay, <laughs> at least in my opinion. Who knows, maybe I'm wrong and it's actually like meta tier one i've been wrong about that in the past but uh i digress there's been there, there, there's been a lot of stuff revealed for the tcg version that makes me kind of excited for it again so just kind of showing off some of the stuff here uh doo -doo -doo. we got pyro phoenix confirmed to be a secret rare because of course he is <laughs> uh, a friend of mine <clears throat> who still plays salmon greats not exactly happy with that <laughs> The Gallant Granite, okay, uh, looks like the freaking Tenyi uh, Synchro, <clears throat> oh god, lost my voice for a second there, what was up with that, uh, so the Tenyi Synchro is an Ultra, which is kind of mildly annoying, <laughs> that's like the only stuff that I was particularly looking forward to initially, um, the Hakai stuff, uh, which is now called Unchained, if you're interested in that, uh, good luck with you. The, the deck is going to be expensive. Everything's like ultra or higher now. Uh, the new <clears throat> Galaxy-esque stuff that's really more for uh, Galaxy-esque Photon Dragon is looking to be not... T sorry, galaxy Tachyon Eyes. No, galaxy Eyes Tachyon Dragon uh, is looking kind of uh, expensive. We got the Tenyi Link 3 along with Striker Dragon. There's the other Unchained cards. Looks like that's either common or super, and that's either a common or a super. So, yeah, but the big guy is, you know, kind of up there. Uh, some other stuff kind of just been revealed. It looks like the... Oh, my God, that's a secret rare. Oh, my God. That looks like a super. Ah, oh jeez. Okay. So, let's get on to the actual new stuff. TCG uh, exclusive stuff. We got Monster Express here. Some people were kind of hype, hoping it's a train card, but no, it's not. So Monster Express, Z, it's EN000, which is interesting. Level 4 Earth Machine Effect Monster, uh, 1500 attack, 1200 defense. You can target one face-up monster you control, send one monster from your extract to the graveyard with the same original type as that monster, but for the rest of this turn you cannot spell some monsters except monsters with the same original type as a monster sent to the graveyard by this effect. You can only use this effect of Monster Express once per turn so this card me is very interesting for certain gimmick archetypes okay so for one thing take for instance the earthbound immortal stuff that just came out you know uh earthbound overwalker or whatever he's called i can't remember his tcg name wants there to be a synchro in the graveyard and a synchro on the field so you summon your synchro you summon monster express you target your synchro you send another synchro to your graveyard oh I have a synchro in the field and in the graveyard now. Special summon. <laughs> uh, oh wait, no, you can't because uh, I mean, unless it's a spellcaster, I forgot. But it, you know, get you get the point, okay? Th this card can be very useful for certain archetypes that want to have stuff in the graveyard from the extra deck. So it'll be interesting to see what people find use for it in. I think that really, in all honesty, like certain. Uh, the biggest one that I can think of is dumping a dragon in the graveyard to like make like Sarkis a bit easier with like uh, Miracle Synchro Fusion or something, but that's just kind of coming off in my head. Then we got Prime Mineral Manstrong. If I remember right, there's another one of these guys in one of the sets. Uh, they're like basically giant rock kaiju things based on baboons apparently uh but this thing is just kind of bad especially compared to the other one the other one i remember being decent but this one's just bad so this one's a level eight earth rock effect monster 2k attack 3k defense you can set this card from your hand to your spell and trap card zone as a spell during the end phase if this card is in the graveyard because it was destroyed by a cart by an opponent's card effect this turn while it was set on your field uh, you can special summon this card, then you can add one monster from your graveyard to your hand. Uh, uh, you can only use a copy of himself once per turn. You can't add another copy. So, there, this phrasing is very odd. If this card is in the graveyard because it was destroyed by an opponent's card effect this turn while it was set on the field, that has caused some interesting uh, arguments 
Some people think that it has to be destroyed to turn it with set. Others say that it has that it just is like you know like a Winter Soldier or whatever it's called, where oh if it's it doesn't matter if it was destroyed. It's just during the end phase of the turn that it was destroyed. Special summon it. I don't know. Uh, it's uh, it's a very convoluted card text. I have to talk to a friend of mine who's like a judge and see what he says, but it, it's still interesting. Then we got Desert Locust. This card people are hyping up is like danger support. It's a level six uh, synchro tuner insect. I did count that up right. Six, yeah. Or 1500 attack, 2400 defense. Whenever it's synchro summoned, the turn player discards a card. You don't use this effect of Desert Locust once per turn. Once per turn, during your opponent's main phase, you can, uh, as a quick effect, and well, synchro summon <laughs> using this card. That's basically what all uh, synchro tuners have. And it's okay. I don't think that dangers really are going to play it. Looks like it's a common, so even if they do, it's not going to be too expensive. It's just okay. Honestly, I was kind of more so trying to think of a way to summon it during your opponent's turn, uh, so that then you can, oh, well, make them discard their cards from their hand. Uh, especially it, since it's not once per turn. Oh, I know it is. Okay, darn. Uh, I thought it wasn't because it was normally beforehand, but no. Oh, well. Okay, so yeah. It is a once per turn, so even if you could find a way to loop it out during your opponent's turn, you can't uh, screw over your opponent. Next up, we got a pretty decent looking continuous spell here. Uh, this is Tyrant Farm. Tribute 1 effect monster, special 1 1 non effect monster of the same original type, attribute from your graveyard. You can only activate one Tyrant Farm per turn. This card, I feel like that there's got to be a certain deck that really likes to do this uh, somewhere. Like, in all honesty, the first thought I can think of is good old uh, Gem Knights, you know, bringing back like your normal monsters, tributing off your effect monsters, and just being able to just kill off from there. Oh, it's a normal spell. Darn, I thought it was a continuous spell. Never mind. Okay. So even with that, this card is just, nah. <laughs> it's just okay. <clears throat> then we got Brutal Beast Battle with good old Master of Oz on the artwork. Oh my god, I still remember when I pulled that as a kid. I thought it was the coolest thing ever. So, it is a normal trap card. Uh, if a player controls two or more, by the way, pardon me if I uh, sound hoarse, I think I'm getting sick, which is driving me nuts because I don't need that in my life right now. Uh, if a player controls two or more monsters of the same type, Ritual, Fusion, Synchro, Exceeds, or Link, they must send to the graveyard uh, so they control no more than one of that monster card type. Then each player that sent a monster to the graveyard for this effect draws cards equal to number of different card types, Ritual, Fusion, Synchro, Exceeds, or Link. They control, and you can only activate one Brutal Beast battle per turn. This card, it's pack filler in all honesty. It, it could be good in a theoretical sense where like, oh, DDD is like the top deck of the format, but I don't see it happening. This, this card's just okay. And then we get to the stuff that I'm excited for, the Dream Mirror stuff. I honestly wasn't too expecting much from this deck in this art in, in the set. Okay, Dream Mirrors, I liked the concept of when they were first revealed. But they were definitely lacking. And this new support makes it through the deck is actually playable as an archetype now, and I can't wait to try it out. So we got Phantasios, the Dream Mirror Friend. It's a good doggo. Good doggo. Adorable doggo. So, a level 4 Light Beast Warrior Effect Monster. So Tinky is going to be great in the deck now. 900 attack, 1900 defense. If discarded spell summoned by the effect of a Dream Mirror Monster, you can target one level 8 or lower Dream Mirror Monster in your graveyard except a copy of itself. Spell summon it in defense. Does not negate the effect, so that does trigger the other Dream Mirror Monster's summon. So, like, let's say you spell summon this guy, and then you use his effect <clears throat> to bring back a monster from your graveyard. You can bring back Sprite. Sprite will let you search out another Dream Mirror Monster. This card's really good. And then, uh, if the... Doo -doo -doo, yeah, during the main phase or the battle phase, if Dream Mirror of Terror is in the field zone, as a quick effect, you can tribute this card, spell summon one Fantasios, Dream Mirror Foe, from your deck. You can only use each effect of Fantasios, uh, sorry, Fantasos, uh, the Dream Mirror Friend, once per turn. Pretty good card overall for the archetype. Then we got Fantasios, the Dream Mirror Foe. He's level 4, 1900 attack, 900 defense. Of course, he's the inverse of the friend. Uh, he looks like a scary doggo, so don't touch him. No petting for him. Level 4, Dark Beast Warrior Effect Monster. Uh, you know, since half the deck is dark, I wonder if Lord Darkness is going to be any good in this deck. Anyway, so 1900 attack, 900 defense. 
If this card is special summoned by the effect of a Dream Mirror monster, this card can attack directly this turn. Being 1900 and being able to take off almost a quarter of your opponent's life points, not half bad. <laughs> During the main or battle phase, if Dream Mirror Joy is in the field, then you contribute him and summon a friend from deck. Uh, you can only use each effect of Phantasmos to Dream Mirror foe once per turn. You know, one of the big things I'm really concerned with for Dream Mirrors is that you can only summon the other monster from the deck. So if you get unlucky and you draw the monsters, <laughs> you're screwed. Oh god, they need a way to get them out of your hand too. And then we got the Fusion Monster. Now this is what really surprised me. I was not expecting this deck to go to fusion route. Uh, I'll be 100% honest. It just didn't make any. Uh, that didn't even cross my mind. <laughs> but fusions, I'm good with that. No, no link spam. Let's go fusions. I like that. Uh, you can see one of the dream mirrors back here. I don't see the other one though. Uh, so that's kind of interesting. So this is uh, one euros, the dream mirror Ur Earl King. Level 10 Light Fairy Fusion Effect Monster, 3k attack, 3k defense. Needs two Dream Mirror monsters with different attributes. While face upon the field, this card is also Dark Attribute. You can only use each of the following effects of 1 Euros uh, once per turn. If another monster you control is attributed, except during the damage step, you can target one card on the field, destroy it. If this card in its owner's possession is destroyed by an opponent's cards, or, yeah, card, battle, or card effect, whatever, you can summon one Dream Mirror monster from your graveyard, except a copy of himself. This card. I am very kind of disappointed with. Okay, my biggest thing is that for a boss monster, especially for Dream Mirrors, he is not particularly great. The biggest thing is, is that he just doesn't do much. Oh, I get to tribute uh, my my friend to summon the foe, and then, oh, I get to pop a card too. Okay, popping one card once per turn is cool and all, but it's not particularly amazing. The thing is, is that I really would have liked if this card could trigger... Uh, multiple times okay imagine some uh, having him out along with friend <clears throat> uh, you activate friends effect tributing himself to summon foe okay uh, effect of one euros pop a card okay your opponent continues to try to do their stuff oh they summon something that might actually kill me effect of phantasmus to dream your foe tribute him summon the friend okay one euros effect pop the other card that would have been good, okay? At most, unless, like, you flooded your field with the Dream Mirror monsters, which now there's only three main deck ones uh, that can switch out between each other. Uh, you know, double that up, there's six total, but you know what I mean. Uh, okay, cool. <laughs> uh, you know, you get three pops. That's nice, but it's not anything amazing right now. It just isn't enough. I feel like, especially since this deck is getting an archetypal fusion spell, hopefully we get some other really good boss monsters for the deck, but right now one year else isn't as good as I would really like. Uh, then we got Dreamier Phantasms. Now here's a, here's a good card. Phantasms. Okay. To continue your spell, when it's activated, you can add a Dream Mirror monster from your deck to your hand. Right there, that that's just that's all they needed to do. But they're doing kind of like what they did with uh, the search card for Fortune Ladies, where it's got two extra effects as well. If a Dream Mirror of Joy is in the field zone, all monsters you control gain 500 attack and defense. If a Dream Mirror of Terror is in the field zone, all monsters your opponent controls lose 500 attack and defense. You can only activate one Dream Mirror of Phantasms per turn. So this card uh, by itself. Not only will it let you search, but will also make it to where your already weak monsters will get stronger as time goes on. Because as you put more of these out, the, that gap is going to get big enough. Especially if I could get three of these out, along with, you know, not only getting three searches, but now there's going to be a 1500 attack point difference between your monsters and your opponents. Which is an insane amount. I don't think that'll happen too often, but that's still really good. Um, I really like this card. <laughs> it's really good. Really good search card. Then we got Dream Mirror of Chaos. This is the Fusion Spell. It's a quick play. Uh, wonderful artwork. <laughs> fusion Summon 1 Dream Mirror Fusion Monster from your extra deck using monsters you control as Fusion Material. If Dream Mirror of Joy is in the field zone, you can also use monsters in your hand as Fusion Material. If Dream Mirror of Terror is in the field zone, you can also banish monsters from your graveyard as Fusion Material. You can only activate 1 Dream Mirror of Chaos per turn. Considering it's a quick play and that you can do it during your player's turn, I think it's going to get really interesting to see what they do with future fusion monsters for the archetype, because being able to like fusion summon during your opponent's turn is really good in certain situations. Can't wait to try that out. <clears throat> Next up we got Dream Mirror Hype. <clears throat> oh yeah, I forgot to even mention it, but it's really nice that like you can change what it does depending on what Dream Mirror is out. Anyways, <clears throat> onto the trap cards. 
Uh, dreamier hypo... Ah, Jesus. Hypnagogia. Ah, oh, jeez. It's a normal trap card. Choose one Dreamer of Joy and one Dreamer of Terror from your hand and or deck, and then place them in your field zone, and one in your field zone, and one in your opponent's field zone face up. You can only activate one Dreamer Hippo... Hypnagio... Uh, no, Hypnagogia uh, per turn. So, this card, uh, people have been comparing it to set rotation. That is true, and it effectively gives you... You know, it puts both Dream Mirrors on the field, which is amazing, okay? Uh, you know, people were joking like, oh, it would be so much better if you could have both Dream Mirrors on the field. Well, here you go. <laughs> this card's really good for the archetype. I think it's well-deserved. Uh, probably going to be a three of because you want to get out both Dream Mirrors pretty easily. Uh, but at the same time, I don't know. Like, your opponent might just get rid of it. So it's definitely going to be interesting uh, going forward. Very good card, though, for the archetype. Then we got a counter trap. Dream Mirror One Year Mocracy. Uh jeez. <laughs> uh when your opponent act so you activate one of these effects. Okay, and you can only activate one of this card per turn. When your opponent activates a spell or trap card while Dream Mirror of Joy is in the field zone, negate the activation, and if you do, destroy that card. Or if your opponent would summon a monster, sorry, special summon a monster while Dream Mirror of Terror is in a field zone, negate the summon, and if you do, destroy that monster. This card is really good as well. It's effectively an Infernity Barrier for the archetype, though what it negates exactly depends on which Dream Mirror is out. Uh, but obviously if you use this in combi a combination of Hypnagogia, um, you'll get both of them out, which means you can do either or anytime you want, and then effectively be able to scare your opponent into not doing anything, hopefully that, or just be able to stop them from doing something that will probably screw you over. This is very interesting. This is a really good get going for the archetype. Okay, uh, Dream Mirror's first like wave of support last time wasn't particularly amazing. One of the biggest things with it though, and even with this stuff still, is the Dream Mirrors themselves, the field spells. Dream Mirror of Joy and Dream Mirror of Terror are just okay field spells. They switch each other up by banishing themselves at the end phase, and then Dream Mirror of Joy protects your monsters while Dream Mirror of Terror burns your opponent for 300 damage every time a day. Um, every time I think you special summon a Dream Mirror, can't remember. But either way, they're, they're not particularly amazing field spells. They really aren't, which sucks because in a field spell reliant archetype, uh, where their whole gimmick is their field spells. You kind of need good field spells, uh, which I do not feel that dream, the Dream Mirror field spells are. Uh, that being said, you're kind of forced to play them, and also at the same time, it sucks like going through them because they banish themselves, so you need to play that other Dream Mirror trap that recycles them, uh, which of course only further adds more into the deck and limits what options you have to play. That being said, I can't wait to test this deck out once it's all on YGO Pro. Looking very good, very interesting, and fun to play. As for the OCG imports, we got uh, Reloader Dragon, now called Overburst Dragon. If you guys don't remember this thing, it's a link to Dark Dragon Link Effect Monster. 1800 attack needs two rockets to go into. You can target another Link Monster Control, summon a rocket from your hand or to your zone that target points to, but the monster summoned by this effect cannot use as Link material. Also destroy it during the end phase. You can only use this effect of Overburst once per turn. When this card is destroyed by battle and sent to the graveyard, you can target a rocket monster in the graveyard, add it to your hand. I'll be honest, this thing's not particularly great. It was the first, like, rocket-specific Link Monster revealed way back when, and we're only just now getting this thing, like, two years later. Uh, yeah, it's not good. It really isn't. You summon a rocket from your hand. Oh, cool. Why isn't from deck either? But the, and the monster can't be used as Link material. Uh... And yeah, also it just has a random add to hand if it gets destroyed in battle. It's just not good. We got two action magics, nothing really particularly amazing here. Uh, a double banking though could be easily abused in an OTK deck. Uh, discard one card this turn. If a monster you currently control destroys an opponent's monster by battle, it can make a second attack during your uh, in a row. Oh wait, I'm getting confused with full turn, I think. Uh, that's what I want to say at least. Ah, this turn double any battle damage that a player takes from battles involving two monsters. There we go. Yeah, these cards, as you can tell from the artwork, are kind of made to com combo with each other. Uh, but really, in all honesty, I feel like that full turn's the better one. 
which I honestly really want to try out in certain decks. Like, imagine it in Cyber Dragons. <laughs> uh, you thought me being able to OTK out of nowhere was already good enough. Now, here's this. And then also Cubics, I think, could really make a full use of this. And it has a recursion effect, which is pretty cool, too. Uh, same thing with Double Banking, where, oh, if it's in your graveyard, you can just go to spell, add it to your, uh, well, set it to your field, which is pretty cool. Uh, <laughs> it takes a while, though, because you can't do it except during your main phase, and not a turn it was set sent there to, at all. So, really, honestly, I feel like these cards might be using some cheesy OTK decks, but I don't think they'll be using anything else. Uh, then we got Astro Ghouls, which isn't even worth really mentioning. It oh summons a level four lower monster if it's a normal summon, and then you can change all monsters' levels based on a die roll. It's just not good. Then we got Bye Bye Damage. Oh, uh, Battle Trap, because <laughs> those have been relevant. Normal Trap Guard during damage calculation. If your monster is attacked, your battling monster cannot be destroyed by that battle. Also, if you take any battle damage from that battle, your opponent takes effect damage equal to a double that amount. Um, <laughs> It's so mean. Imagine getting hit with 4k to the face and you flip this over and you do 8k back to your opponent and win. Uh, that That's only like imaginable with like freaking the double damage attack or action magic over here. Or with like freaking, uh, oh crap, what is it called? Uh, oh yeah, Chaos Max. <laughs> oh, that'd be funny. Oh, I know you'd both, <laughs> you wouldn't. Oh god, I guess you'd both die, wouldn't you? Anyway, so then we got Dance of Beasts, a uh, normal trap card when an opponent's monster declares a direct attack while a combined attack of all three set monsters they control is a thousand or higher. Special summon three monsters with different names in attack position, one each from your hand, deck, and graveyard. You can only activate one Dance of Beasts per turn. This is a funny comeback card. I don't think it's ever going to be relevant, but A, it's nice to have as well. Uh, who knows, might be relevant in one day or might be just a fun tech option. So, yeah. So that's all of the TCG reveals for Chaos Impact, especially the Dream Years. What do you guys think? Do you guys like Chaos Impact? Are you looking to pick up a lot of it? Personally, really, the only things I'm interested in are the new Tenyi and the uh, Dream Years stuff. At least as far as I can remember as to what's in this set. It's been so long since I've looked at it, gotta look into it again. But what do you guys think? Uh, rate, comment, subscribe. Have a great day. It's your birthday. Happy birthday. And see you all later. Peace out.